ladies and gentlemen of any age young and middle and there's no old <laughs> this is fiction that became real this is the fantasy story that we all dream of this is what actually saved my life a total miracle and this is the story of young and old united uh, wait a second young and there is no old <laughs> united and let's let me start right away with there are so many stories i'm going to tell you unbelievable stories about this friendship with the best woman ever lived marianne weber my former landlord who is sadly in heaven and by the way i'm sharing this at the 28th of march in 2024 which would have been her 92nd birthday and she was the woman that would grow 100 years old and yeah maybe one day there will be some justice and we will find out if she was kind of murdered in the end because there's a lot of bad crimes happened that separated us but i would not talk about this in this episode that we skip this now i i all oh, this is now you see what i have to do in my mind constantly not only with this story but with others i have to kind of like oh my god oh my god okay skip it jump it just avoid it and because i have no voice i'm invisible there's no justice in no case and i've experienced so many unbelievable crimes to my life and there's no justice i'm a person who has to live with every crime and has to find ways mentally to just overcome it and move on while it's just kind of a chronic uh yeah chronic pain and chronic suffering from it but and let's focus on the wonderful incredible stories the 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 hollywood disney whatever fantasy about this this these perfect two people sorry for calling all ourselves perfect because nobody's perfect we are all not perfect and i would show you also in the stories then what made us imperfect but um i also not only like to say but this is what i've learned that our imperfection made it perfect that it wasn't perfect that made it actually way better and more perfect because because it made it real when i met her that was me as a homeless in 2011 and i just came to the city cologne germany has a 1 million population and i was totally in a survival and struggling i was partly living outside in the tent partly i met wonderful people and they let me sleep in on the couches or so but um i was yeah searching for a home and nobody would give me a home until there was this day when i walked into the house where i would be living for the next 10 years and didn't leave the house for the next four hours talking to marianne and to our mutual friend who was always there this was the best friend of marianne who also became my friend uh, i connected with the two women but um, it would be yeah the the decision of marianne if she wants this young man to live under her roof in the only room that she rented out in of her, of her big house and by the way she was there alone now for around um she wasn't entirely alone but because in between there were some renters but they also left then again but um, she was basically alone uh, since her husband died in yeah 10 years before i arrived there and i was the happiest guy i was saved and i was also just like i knew right there and then this is i'm gonna be forever loyal there's 
whatever I'm I would just be forever loyal but I could not see coming that it would really become my true family I mean not only become it was from the beginning but you don't know the future you don't know that this could be possibly real so you as with as somebody without family you don't know family so even if you meet this this is not something that could be ever real but then over the years I realized it's really real and it's really safe and it's safe absolutely safe for life and this is a miracle it's really a fantasy miracle that you can only write and and then produce a movie about this about real true family like absolutely till death do us part no matter what happens and completely safe in in look and by safe i mean that i could go to her any day in any mood in any feeling in any any me you know like when when you're as a younger person you're kind of like yeah struggling with the society processing the internet the people the inequality trying as, as a creator especially trying to find some follower impossible trying to find integration in music impossible trying to find integration in writing impossible trying to find integration in any arts impossible as worldly man impossible all of it impossible trying to find a girlfriend impossible trying to find uh, any friends impossible it's like your life it's a complete living nightmare actually in in a in in during these years and <laughs> i've uh, maybe it's got got even worse uh, not only maybe but it's still the same nightmare and even worse for for the today's generation um, and so I had to process this and then I um, yeah whatever was kind of like really just, just struggling and I was depressed uh, at times and sad at times often in the in these first years there also because all kind of like this homelessness experience and and the reality what made me homeless you know the horrible family story the the the, the wannabe family in quotes family that, that was actually just all hardcore abuse from the start and all of this also came came um came back you know like when you're let's say you have a bad family story and you have abuse story and then you kind of like in a certain age it comes back more and more and more in your mid-twenties or so you know it hits so hard and no matter the circumstances of no matter how how i was in what mental state i was i was me the core of me was always me i am always like this guy that i am that you can meet today no matter what happened to me and um, this woman has a core had a core that was always her no matter what she ages or experienced or world the different world she comes from and our cores were just a perfect match and the core values of who we are and how we receive um, another human being and talking and communication and and listening and and honesty and um, respect uh, and these core values they were truly a completely perfect match so it didn't matter what i was in, in what state i was mentally in this crazy society and it didn't matter uh, our different lifestyles or so um, none of this mattered it was was just perfectly safe because of these core values and being kind of an absolute congruent match congruent is a highly uh, eloquent word right <laughs> I don't know if it's even an English word. Congruent, congruent is a, is a rather German word, but it means the the perfect match. And um, so this this perfect match, perfect safety was. I could just just go to her, and I would talk to her every day. Da ist jetzt ein Vogel, der badet da. Der der sitzt der sitzt da und der hat sich gerade so gewaschen. Der sitzt, der sitzt da drin, der Vogel. 
talk to her every day because I don't know especially when I was sad or when I was scared or when I was depressed when I was lonely I would just go down to her and I would uh, she would always have an open door for me she was old and for so many years alone and so since I moved in and was there every day she was also happy to have somebody to talk to and um, I was happy to have somebody to talk to, to talk to in a real honest way, you know, like not in a, there was nothing, yeah, that was just completely real, or authentic, as I felt, as I, whatever, you know, if I wanted to say, I don't like the system, I don't like TV, while she was sitting in front of the TV, watching TV, and I said these things, you know, because I just said what I felt, what was on my mind, but I'm also not filterless, okay? And that's the difference between me and her. And that's <laughs> that's that's how, how this, what I said earlier, the imperfection that made it perfect, that she was partly filterless and she said everything. <laughs> Some things that you don't want to know about an old person's life. But um, if I'm skipping a little bit fast forward, it doesn't matter because I would be confronted with old person's life more and more and more anyways and that up to any degree of anything like the kind of for a young person unimaginable but to me it didn't matter and specifically i'm for example talking about um yeah having to help her to get get dressed from kind of naked when she fell in the bathroom when she slipped and when she was kind of trying to wash herself and the towel is gone and she's crying for help and and I'm hearing it and it's very dramatic and then I have to pick her up and and um, this is not the only situation and there was yeah I mean she and she was carrying the, the this uh, maybe 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 I'm proving right now I am f not filterless so <laughs> I'm just not telling you what she was carrying and what was spilled <laughs> But maybe that gave you a little bit. However, what I'm trying to say is that no matter the intensity of something that you think as a young person, this is not supposed to be your life. I think this is what, what a young person, if it's not the perfect match and the perfect core values and the perfect loyalty, I think that a young person is just running away because the young person would think this is not how, what I'm supposed to do in this, in this age. But I'm telling you, there's nothing better nothing better in, in in this life to be exposed to the future life of yourself and finding out that the young person is not throwing you away because when you are old you're going to be alone the young people will all avoid you they will not listen to you because you are annoying and you repeat yourself they, you are probably going to smell this is normal and they will don't want to smell this you're going to say things that they don't want to hear and you're gonna be like that in a way they don't want to hear and don't want to see and old people are not really valued even if if in the dreamy version when I tell you the real story here of a perfect story that is unbelievable fiction is then obviously somebody cares now about the old people but the reality is the most people really don't care about old people and that starts not only at the high age it starts literally already in my age as i now feel <laughs> like in the in the i'm now 35 years old and i feel like this is already is already where 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 it's kind of over where where in in the young life okay you do stuff and you do stuff and you do stuff but at the end of the day all of this will fade away all of this and in the at the end of the day you need to come back home and my home was not only in a, in a house home i was coming back home to marianne as a person that was my home you know for you is that no matter what i would talk about her no matter what i how i would change it was didn't matter we would always have a real honest conversation and she always understood me totally like really an understanding person i was born there all I am, literally all I am, all my skills I developed under the roof in my home in, in with living with Mariana. By the way, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She, the best woman ever lived, Marianne, is the mother of the worldies. I mean, she's technically in a metaphorical sense, it maybe sounds better when we call her the granny. <laughs> 
the granny of the worldies, but she's actually the mother of the worldies because she gave me the fat one, the number one, the first ever worldie. She gave me, gifted me this fat worldie in the, as I call it, the egg state. The egg state is when the worldie is there but not fully burst and then it's an egg, you know. <laughs> and then from the egg state the worldie has to be burst and then the worldie is worldie. However, now you can see and the worldies were always there in the house and I was always showing her the worldies and she found this so cute and it made her so happy look she was a woman of, of such deep love for animals but and this is rare also for, for humans and also for the worldies the worldies caused the same cheering up love when, when I shown her the worldies and always these new versions and the cute funny versions and then the tongue was hanging out of worldy and stuff of super worldy for example you know? <laughs> and she was always brightening up like with the animals and that's that's something that everybody loves animals you know but rarely the people have this have this for something else because easy it's easy to love cute animals you know but humans are also cute and worldies are also the same cute like animals even cuter actually even funnier However, um, this is this is now the, the probably the greatest revelation ever that she is the granny or the mother of the worldies, and it's really true. It's really true. And you can see I was in our shared kitchen, and I, I was so often I was literally this was everything the house. I was in the house. This was our house. I was I could go anywhere. There was no closed doors. Could sit there if she is there. She was mostly there, but or not. It doesn't matter because it was our shared house and uh, I could go in the garden I was doing a lot of gardening by the way and there's also so much footage oh my god I can I can bombard you with footage by the way I want you to have all this footage the, the transa library I'm gonna share all of this footage um, this is stock footage of the rarest kind and it's worldly very rare worldly footage and one day people will appreciate that and it will also show you that all I'm telling you is really true and it makes all of this video footage the most miracle it's kind of the stuff that you can write that you you would want this hollywood would want to produce this wonderful story with this perfect young and old united and living together in harmony like the true family while he's a former homeless it's the dream of, of a guy without family and homelessness finding a real home but also was also in uh, yeah, this this intelligence to to her, this common sense, you know, that that it makes totally sense to listen to a person and to try to understand the person if what the person says is logical and makes sense and is is a fair assessment of something or a fair feeling, you know, of something un, unfair or so. Uh, there are these people in life that want you always to be happy, you know, when you always have to be happy, and then every fucking thing is superficial and is. Is not real. There's nothing better than than being allowed to be to be just real and to feel what you feel, and to have somebody who understands it, and who is not outcasting you for it and not throwing you away. A total struggle outside of Mariana, but with Mariana it was all uh, the perfect dream. With the imperfection, the imperfections just made it perfect. You know, finding out that that you can have a, 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 an argument, but we we rarely ever argued. But um, for example, when the pandemic hit, you know, um, she was in she was having a different different perspective with the pandemic and the the all of it. Uh, she would always listen to me, always listen to me, except of when it come to health advice. She would listen to doctors. There are some doctors out there, and I'm following them. And I'm just literally advocating for them because they're heroes, they're truth fighters, and they're intelligent, and they're real scientists. But the mainstream doctors and the doctors that Mariana met in her life were these kind of doctors that are just system doctors that would just prescribe bullshit and um, never really actually cure you and help you. And so she would... It took years until to make her understand a few things about the human health and to get her listen to me and to overcome this implanted uh, godlike status of doctors, you know, 
if a doctor title is saying something, even if the doctor would advise her to do something that would get her killed, she would do it and she would not listen to me. And that was something when we got a little bit arguing. You know, all versions of antibiotics they gave to her and none of, none of it worked and she had to listen finally to me. And uh, that's when I was like, uh, suddenly leaving, the, I would never left the conversation without a goodbye, without a respectful, normal end of conversation. I suddenly left the conversation. I was getting mad and we argued and I left the conversation. And that was, that was, uh, that was intense move of mine to make her understand this time it, I can't take this. You have to listen now to me. You have to, this is, can't continue. Um, so then I went two, two hours later or so, I went downstairs, totally apologized. And I, mean, I, I was praying to God that nothing has had changed, you know, that, that, that I didn't hurt her, that I didn't destroy our relationship or so. And uh, it, nothing changed, <laughs> nothing had changed. But for these two hours, I died, I died. I died, I thought it's all over, I destroyed it. I screwed it up, I lost her. <laughs> Because, I mean, it was disrespectful. I was never disrespectful to her. And uh, she was never disrespectful to me. But uh, that one time, but hey, it, it worked. Afterwards, she started to listen more and more and more to me. And um, she adapted to my therapies, to my knowledge. And she built more and more and more on my knowledge. Then she started to ask me really questions and how is this? And um, it helped her so much. And she found out really the results, you know, of, of having a, a, a better diet and um, what to eat and how to do this. And uh, especially when it comes to the, the gut, gut bacteria, the darm flora, how important that is. And these like things, she started to build on my knowledge and she's told me this really works. Yeah, I'm feeling so much better. Actually, it saved her life at some point when she got sick and had this cough that was the worst cough I've ever heard in my life. And she was at the verge of a lung infection, the antibiotics, complete resistance. <laughs> the doctor's doing nothing but prescribing more and more and more. And um, yeah, I also went with the salvia and explained to her exactly how to do this, how to not get the mucola to dry out and that she has to and not swallow it so too much down of it, but just go, go have it in the throat and then spit it out, but keep water, drink water afterwards. These kind of kind of simple tricks, you know, but the way you do it, it can, it can uh, these are miracles, can, can uh, natural miracle met methods to um, cure certain things. This is what I wanted to say about the imperfections when we were arguing. If, or, or here, for example, another thing, something that was the worst ever for me. Um, when there was water in the cellar, she accused me instantly that I did this because she was never downstairs. I was washing her clothes, you know, <laughs> and it could have been only me. I did something. I did something at the washing machine. I stuffed the washing machine. I stuffed the gutters or so this this where the water goes in. I must have done this because she couldn't have done it because she was not downstairs. So it must have been me. And it, she accusing me, this was something when I would say, this is, this is a sort of a personality thing that I don't want her to have. This is not right. This is not fair. I don't deserve this. And it really hurt me. And it really made me feel lonely and really making me feel depressed because I know I wasn't doing anything. I was actually washing her clothes and my clothes and that was all, I, I was just naturally using the washing machine, I didn't do anything different. Now I called the guy from the plumbers and uh, he found out it was the broken, um, the heater, broke an old heater, broke and all the water from all the heater system, from all the water pipes from the heater system uh, relieved into the cellar, you know, naturally gravitation the pipes, the, it goes all downstairs when the when the um, uh, heater is broken downstairs. <laughs> I went to her and told her that and she was relieved but she didn't say sorry. She didn't say sorry. She was still totally in stress mode. Whenever there was something she was always stressing because she was too old, it was overwhelming her and it was stress mode. I go, went downstairs and cleaned up all this dark black spider web spider insects stuff however i cleaned this all up 
for hours and hours and hours i removed the water from the cellar there was also the water dust sucker i think i wrote wrote in this in my book in evolution imperfect that i um, introduced here in this episode in this reading episode i think it's in the book maybe you find this in the book you uh, you can use this evolution imperfect maybe i told this as some some um, encyclopedia you can try to find water dust sucker water sucker dust sucker try to find this with uh, control f search for um, water cellar um, spider something and then you maybe find that find this chapters where i wrote this i hope i wrote about this this should be in the book <laughs> um so this imperfection something this this instant accusations and the not apologizing that was bad but she was she was never really she wasn't the person that said sorry or apologized really in 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 a sorry way but she was sorry and she could feel it and she would express it in her way she would try to make it up and she was sorry but she would never use the words i'm sorry and that's also something that it's maybe it's important to say sorry it's also important to show that you are sorry and and to make it up to somebody okay you don't always have to say maybe sorry but but uh, maybe sometimes somebody should say sorry because it's however nothing changed we survived the imperfections you know we've survived the challenges between humans and that's that's what makes it more perfect and it only made our relationship better and stronger in 2017 uh, the the criminal case manager really criminal provable and this woman oh my god i hope she one day goes to prison for what she's done to me um she simply cut me off of the social care for disabled person that i was and am um but also at that time and um she cut me off of entirely of all social care so i had nothing i was just in a zero money person you know this is this is this is killing somebody you, if if somebody takes your entire money and you have no more income and you have no nothing no not nothing on the bank no income this is murder you're done you can't even buy water you can't even buy food and also i couldn't pay the rent but mariana what would she do exactly she would let me live there without rent for month with an s not just one month for month and she would also give me a little bit money but i tried to avoid that it was just a little bit but um mainly i was going begging and that broke me completely apart i was just outside crying i was fucked up it was really sad and there's also footage uh, video maybe maybe i have still video but also photo photo i was begging with a big sign and it was uh, because i couldn't take money she was already let me live there without rent paying rent and um, i couldn't take m much more money she gave me five euro and then i was like i can't i can't do this I, I have to kind of like now yeah fight for my fight for myself and get some money here somehow get, uh, went begging uh, but she would have given me more money but I, I i had too bad bad conscience because she i already couldn't pay rent and she was the woman that i i never wanted to be this guy because she was the best woman ever lived and i never wanted to be guy not paying her rent I never wanted to be guy to disappoint her and not give her the least that she deserves. It's it's, uh, but look, it was family. I mean, she did, really didn't care about this money at all. It was just, it was symbolic. It didn't matter to her, and it was just unbelievable to find out that that yeah that she that is really real. I mean, I knew that, but now <laughs> at this point, you really know. And this, yeah, there's a, there's a million million more stories. There's so many stories that she, everything she told me about this wonderful husband. She had a really good man, good husband. She always said, "You would have gotten along so great. It's so sad that you couldn't meet." And she told me about the, the, the when they lost their cat after 19 years. They both were standing there crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. And now I'm going to show you something. I have this cat here. 
this is the original photo that was hanging in the house for nine for, uh, for I don't know for how many years whenever I needed something in the house when I saw something and she wouldn't have I mean it was just basically all standing around because she was yeah having all of this stuff and the, the husband long gone and then I would ask uh, if I can have this and she would always say yes and one day there was this big stone that I've that I've seen and that's how we found out oh, that's how we found out that Marianne and I both were into collecting stones. <laughs> who, who, like, honestly, what, what, what are the odds that you're even both into collecting stones? Who collects stones? I mean, maybe an older person, but even that is rare, I think. And then a younger person. Great, so, so great photos. How is it that we find out after years living together that we even have more rareness in common? That we are both into collecting stones. And she's, she gifted me also this big stone. I don't know if this is a stone that's maybe some, some expensive stone. I don't know. I've never never looked this up. Maybe I'm sitting on some, some, some precious ex expensive stone. I would never sell it. If it was worth a million, I would probably sell it. I'm sorry, but oh, but only to to make to kick in worldy mania. If I had money, I would buy people to create this social media online work for me and to get me out there in the world. And then I could share free social wealth and I could share forever everything. And uh, so I would only sell this this stone, even if it would, would would be very painful. If it was worth so much, then then only do that to bring better to the world. You will be forever remembered. I miss you every day. I love you. My rock in the Brandung, the Fels in the Brandung, the, the, the safe haven, the home, the family. This was also for everyone else who has lost someone. And this was also for everyone else. What really matters, the real friendships, the real family friendships. This is it. This is it.